डियर प्यूर यूरोलॉजी फेसबुक व्यूअर्स गुड इवनिंग वन एंड ऑल टुडे आवर टॉपिक इज सुपाइन पीसीएल डिफिकल्ट केसेस एज यू ऑल नो सुपाइन पीसीएल इज पिकिंग अप डी सी आर एस इज पिकिंग अप लॉट ऑफ जूनियर्स आर डूइंग सुपाइन पीसीएल समटाइम्स वेन यू डू मोर देन ट्वेंटी केसेस यू कैन गो फॉरवर्ड फॉर कॉम्प्लेक्स केसेस ऑल्सो लाइक टॉपिक और लाइक दैट सो टुडे डॉक्टर आदित्य शर्मा will show uh, two cases where difficult cases how to do supine pcrl he is senior consultant at apollo medics super specialty hospital lucknow has done training in endo urology laparoscopy i will share the screen already aditya sharma has been with us uh, previous talks uh, as he is well known in uh, supine pcrl so his talk will be complicated supine p supine pcrl cases how to do so apollo medics super specialty at lucknow he is uh, well known faculty now and uh, he is demonstrating live surgery many times supine pcrl across the india may, uh, recently he has been practicing technique of supine pcrl for many years in fact uh, way before we started uh, he has uh, started this and uh, pro- uh, propagated in india he has present his uh, fasmal pcrl technique in various national and international platforms and has been actively popularizing supine pcrl in india his other areas of interest uh, expertise are advanced laparoscopic reconstructive urology renal transplant and urethroplasty so with this uh, as we are already a little delayed i will directly go to the uh, and over the program to aditya sharma thank you sir for joining and uh, over to you so thank you chandmohan sir and uh, i am grateful for this invite to share my work and just uh, share my screen and the presentation yeah Hey, you can see my screen. No, no, no. Zoom. You have gone to Zoom. You should close that. Ah, yes. Now presentation. Ah, uh, video is seen. Yeah. Just close. So the short, uh, short videos. These are. Did you optimize? Yeah, they are. Okay. Okay. Voice is breaking. Anyway, you start, please. Yeah, you have gone to PowerPoint presentation now. Yes. Right. We are not able to hear you. Hello. Aditya, we are not able to hear you. Yes. Hello. We are not able to get any sound, Aditya. Call it. Hello. 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 Aditya we are not able to hear you We are not able to hear you Hello Hello oh, Yes now we are able to hear you Ah oh, okay it is audible now thank god so I think there's some issue with the wireless headphone So uh, I'll just share the screen again sir Yeah this is uh, first slide where i would like to um, share the screen 
Yeah, yeah, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. So, yeah. They're visible now? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, I'm sharing this presentation. There is one case of osteogenesis imperfecta. Okay. Or how I tackled that case, I'll just brief how I practice supine PCN. So, this is the first step of the position. You can see a small bolster lifting the same buttock around 30 degree and the upper side support is given behind the back to lift it around 50 to 70 degrees. And we mark the anti, uh, posterior axillary line beforehand and the ribs and the iliac crest. This is how we position the, the position which we call it is a flying free oblique supine modified lithotomy or phosphal position. This is how positioning is done. So we first put the small bolster, then we take patient on lithotomy and the back is supported by the back rest so that the back, back of the patient is exposed. So there is enough space for uh, accessing the stone from the side or even if we want to go back and we can even see the, the other half of the back on the other side also. So next. Uh, uh, the just brief technique of puncture as the kidney is lying with lower pole uh, oriented laterally and anteriorly. So the normally the inferior puncture is more lateral and as we progress to the upper calyx or middle calyx the puncture site generally moves in this direction. So that generally follows the uh, line of the uh, kidney uh, how the kidney is anatomically positioned. Uh, underneath and first we will demonstrate technique of inferior calicial access in phosmal position. A plain CT KUB is sufficient to rule out retroreal colon and preoperative puncture planning. After cystoscopy and ureteric catheterization. So this is how we do it normal puncture technique. The, uh, we take the puncture in 0 degree. Is it visible? Okay. And uh, after the puncture, we can we turn the C arm craniocordially to confirm whether needle is anterior or posterior. So if the needle is anterior, so needle will go down as the X-ray source is also going down. So anterior same. And if the needle is posterior, the needle will go up while the X-ray source goes down. So this is the so ASPO is the short mnemonic which we follow to you know uh, remember at that time whether needle is going in anterior or posterior direction. So after this you can see we have taken the puncture the water is not coming so now I am turning the CM you can see the needle is going down so I am anterior to the calyx. So again we go back in 0 degree. and correct the direction of the puncture slightly posteriorly. Now you can see I am going little more posterior and indentation of the calyx also is much appreciated while uh, we are puncturing the calyx. So that also gives some idea where most of the cases uh, now I don't have to rotate the C arm because with time one gets the idea whether they are in right plane. So now the puncture is fine and uh, the water comes out and that's how we go. Um, next is that we pass the guide wire. So again, the method has advantage. One can sit and operate. During that. surgery, surgeon can remain seated. You can see there is significant distance away from the C arm. So you don't have to move C arm back and forth and you are quite away from the radiation source. And you can see all these stone fragments are spontaneously coming out by gravity. So most of the times I do not use uh, forceps, just sometimes I use forceps to dislodge the stone. If a stone moves from, you know, from inferior calyx and if you have done a superior galatial puncture, it is possible to go down and clear that even from a superior galatial puncture axis. 
and suppose if the stone is present in supraic calyx it is possible in uh, terms of uh, supine pcnl to access the supraic calyx from a inferior calcial puncture which studies have shown up to 80% times it is possible compared to where it is only 20% times possible from inferior to supraic calcial access uh, in uh, prone uh, position so all type of stone and everything can be now i'll just demonstrate the case so we actually did a uh, ecirs in this case you can use the diagram you showing large uh, you know partial stagon stone with multiple secondary calculi present the patient anatomy is slightly unique i'll show next i'll just i'm showing the ct so this is the stone bulk which was present we had planned for ecirs the patient is a has a condition called osteogenesis imperfecta so the bone density is very less and uh, the patient has frequent tendency of fractures uh, whenever there is you know unwanted movement or any trauma to the bone so very trivial traumas can result in fractures so this patient was attempted uh, previous attempt of pcnl while he was being turned prone he had a fracture of his leg actually and with this you can see that this mel it is mel united and the procedure could not be completed then the patient was referred to us for the supine pcnl uh, because the patient it was not possible to turn him prone this is all the anatomically how the patient is the lies the legs are just like that we, we only got this much of window to access the lower tract i am doing the marking here i am marking the the posterior line you can see this is how it is and this is how we have positioned the patient so everything is same as postural position but because the legs cannot be straightened so the the lithotomy cannot be given in a conventional way we uh, applied sufficient tapes to fix the legs because he already had a fracture du uh, during positioning in the in last surgery so you can see we have done the rgp and as i showed the technique the same technique we have followed to for the puncture here so i have taken np calcial access and the stone is broken with the lithoclast and quite a hard stone long standing so here the you know there were large stone fragments which were impacted in the system so we used forcep to dislodge them and once you dislodge them most of the fragments they drain by the gravity you can see the, then we pass the uh, flexible ureteroscope from below so my colleague he passed the extra sheet and scope from below and we transferred whatever secondary stones or migrated stones which had gone to the other calyces this was the amount of stone which was finally removed and uh, we achieved a complete clearance around table we could confirm he was a happy patient while going home and uh, so while on table we could confirm going in every calyx that we have removed all the stones thank you so is there any uh, any any discussion uh, yeah, discussion is uh, uh... Uh, one question from the audience that uh, Sandeep has asked that does uh, uh, preoperative CD is sufficient or intraoperative ultrasound is needed just to second, sir, just uh, for a beginner? Sorry, sorry, sir, sir, say again. If intraoperative ultrasound is uh, essential in supine PCL to rule out colon. Uh, no, not at all. I, I, at all. I almost never. i almost never use a, a intraoperative ultrasound because i am very comfortable doing entire procedure under fluoroscopic guidance and 
there now we have enough radio radiological studies which have shown that the chances of uh, retro renal colon is actually less in supine or oblique lateral positions so risk of colonic injury is uh, not there i think negligible as long as patient you have ruled out a retro renal colon and you stay behind the posterior axillary line which is a very safe uh, anatomical uh, boundary and so far uh, over many many hundreds of cases i have not had a single case of colonic injury as such uh, aditya in this case uh, uh, passing access sheet and flexible scopy was it difficult small penis or position or anything uh, you, uh, you you want to uh, mention yeah other things were quite normally developed i think they were because we got a small window to enter so only flexible ureteroscope could be passed the it was not possible to pass a rigid ureteroscope eh? suppose if he had a, a, a ureteric stone also then uh, only the access the flexible ureteroscope actually went easily we passed a 9 french sheet access sheet 9.5 and uh, with that we passed the flexible ureteroscope it was not uh, exactly difficult but yes the the space and the window which was which, that was fixed we could not modify it in uh, any way uh, you, you do all the cases in fastmill position that means more turning towards the opposite side position so if this the variation is between 50 to 70 degree they if i don't anticipate a supericaricial puncture uh, yeah. so then i would just turn to around 50 degree the buttock at 30 degree and the shoulders are at around 50 degree what and are the what are the disadvantage of turning the patient more uh, is does the pcs rgp falls on the spine and you may you may feel uncomfortable for going the needle on to the spine worried sometimes some beginner psychological fear uh, if you see lateral medial some distance uh, then you feel that you are moving the kidney or puncturing feeling will be there if you are on the spine Uh, slightly overlapping of the pcs and pelvis will happen it won't be spread out is it a little concern factor if you shift more because upper calicial puncture medial is okay uh, other other times i observed that in this case also calices are nicely seen but overlapping on to the pelvis and spine may be there yeah i totally agree with that more lateral the patient is more likely that uh, the the species may superimpose uh, the spine so one thing is yes we can choose to turn patient less if we are not anticipating a supercalicial puncture or access and mostly now i am rarely doing supercalicial access unless stone itself is present in supercalicus large yes yes so otherwise we can turn cm away from us around 10 15 degrees so that uh in, in a way avoids the overlap of, of with the spine so there yes. is in these two ways the third thing about you know going into the spine with the needle it is very actually very uh, difficult unless somebody is very much off trajectory so first confirmation we have to do like we were discussing uh, risk of colonic injury so colon in, in my opinion if somebody is able to finish pcnl he can either be in the colon or in the pcs it will take something extraordinary that going through the colon in this position and also entering the pcs so if you are too much off then you need to come back and go back again correct to direction rather than yeah. just turning wherever we have gone we turn suddenly from there upward so that may risk actually the colonic injury you can either enter colon or you can either enter pcs they both ha- don't happen similarly yeah. for spine also first we once we do the puncture you can see i i most of the time i have see uh, many surgeons prefer that to hold the respiration so the kidney becomes still but in actually in my case i don't uh, want that i want kidney to move normally with respiration if a patient is under spinal anesthesia then anyways it is moving or even under general anesthesia also we do, i don't ask to hold uh, respiration so because once you hit the kidney the kidney stops moving so you go in certain direction and if you are if the kidney stops moving you you are at least hitting the kidney if you are hitting the kidney in a straight line from the entry it is very unlikely that you will hit anything else in the way 
so once the kidney yes. stops moving you can either be 1 cm above or 1 cm below because only that much space is there and if you see the indentation of the calyx that is the second thing so before even turning i see whether my needle is indenting the calyx that means i am end on on the calyx because we are seeing puncture yeah. from the lateral side it, it is much more easy to get a end on puncture actually true end on puncture in terms of bull's eye the calyxial direction and uh, the direction of needle overlaps because the calyx is like this and we are trying to do like this so we may enter here also and we may enter here also so that is a uh, we can have a lateral entry into the calyx or through the infantibulum but in this case one can ensure end on puncture and uh, if this by these methods one can avoid you know hitting uh, other unnecessary organs or a spine or maybe colon okay we'll go to second case yeah sure so this was in a slightly unique case and it had lot of it all it is also case of ecirs i just uh, share so i guess the video is seen now so no, sorry Uh, you can see the video, sir. Yeah, it's it is it's opened. Yes. Yeah. So this is the case of uh, uh, ECRS we had done for a diverticular stone with you know infantibular severe infantibular stenosis of the inferior calyx and calyxial diverticulum. So I'll just show the CT scan. So this was the CT. Of the patient, you can see the in the inferior calyx, the entire stone bulk is present, and it because normally we don't do a contrast CT, uh, uh, and I did a, uh, I went in and I thought I I'll push the contrast, but I had actually planned for an endovision puncture. I was hoping that I because the stone is anyways in the inferior calyx, I thought I can go in and plan an endovision puncture, but while I am try. I have passed the flexible uterinoscope, and I am trying to see. I filled the RGP, and there is a small communication which is filling. I am trying to see where is the opening of this calyx, but I could not see the opening. Then we had no option, but we had to pass uh, the. I had to take the puncture uh, because some contrast had gone in the in the calyxial diverticulum, so I took a direct puncture, and after passing the needle, I. Uh, filled with some betadine saline i passed flushed it with some betadine saline to locate the opening so here we can see here the opening of the uh, we could see the opening of the infundibulum which was there but it was very narrow so first we tried we thought we'll do an infundibulotomy and we thought i'll uh, i'll pass a guide wire from the flexible uterinoscope so i'll show what was the problem when uh, we were trying that you can see i have passed the guide wire uh, from the flexible uterine endoscope but this pcs had very less space uh, pcs in the in terms of the, the calyxial diverticulum had very less space it was totally occupied by the stone so it, the enough guide wire was not able to coil inside so when we are removing the flexible scope the the guide wire snaps out so ultimately we could not keep the guide wire in place so we decided to dilate the system so i had then so decided to dilate the system and uh, take out the stone from the pcnl track i have dilated with alkin cannula now past the uh, nephroscope and we could reach the stone so it was a matrix plus uh, there is a very hard stone component around 1500 hounds field so both type of components were there and i could clear the entire stone but the challenge still was present that i was still not able to see the opening from this side and from that side it was not uh, possible because the space was less earlier so now what we did after once we confirmed the complete stone clearance Again, with the flexible erotor endoscope. So this is just a stone clearance, small part. Going to complete stone, we have cleared from this diverticulum.
now we changed to the uh, flexible uh, ureterinal scope FURS and I again tried to pass the guide wire from the opening which I had seen I had seen earlier and we uh, I took uh, took the guide wire out from the nephrostomy tract and so uh, I could ensure where the infundibular opening is there from the PCNL side. So I'll just show they are taking out the guide wire. And this is the in narrow infundibulum. This was not seen because of the edema from this side. And now we did a infundibulotomy with laser. infundibulum was nicely dilated and it was cut uh, 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 and season was given and we give two cuts above and below also to make it wide open and after that pass the stent from below and the stent was kept in the NPA calyx and uh, also kept the nephrostomy across the infundibular opening into the pelvis from the uh, P, uh, PCNL entry side. Here the stent is passed in, and kept in the NPA calyx. Because these in pendulum, they have tendency to become re-stenosed. We, although we have made a wide entry, but there is a risk that it can re-stenose. So I, I prefer right. keeping a stent also and across me through the... Yeah, yeah. So here I passed the nephrostomy and I've kept the stent in the NP calyx. So what I wanted to highlight about this case, this was a fairly complex case. And what had happened that uh, we were not able to finish it uh, by single one method. Because even if we were able to do, uh, we could have gone through our IRS, but we are not able to enter the because of narrow infundibulum. And infundibulotomy was also not possible from RIRS because uh, the guide wire always snaps out. There was a lot of stone bulk was there. And because it was a metric stone, it was always reasonable to do it, uh, do a proper PCNL. And when we entered from the PCNL side, the, we could not see the opening from this side. So uh, in terms of changing, we, that day we had only one audio video system. So video system was only one. So we had to switch cameras between uh, lower and upper track but it was it could be conveniently done and we could finish the case because uh, the supine penis serial gave the option of doing uh, combined access from above and below so they can be more than one ways of tackling same case but this is how i tackled it and i'll be happy to answer if any uh, queries are there the only thing it's very well done uh, only thing is this uh, laser uh, uh, infundibulotomy may uh may again may reach you know that's a different issue and uh either uh, simple dilatation or laser cutting is always controversy there is no point discussing that the only important point here you enlightened is access uh, had it not been guide wire passed so many times with flexible scope into the divert plum where will you cut it's impossible ureter catheter flushing uh, may not help always even if you see sometimes you may not be able to cut so I, I strongly agree with that and the most of the times if the diverticular opening is not communicating with the infundibulum, uh, I mean uh, the pelvis will not be comfortable. So this incision without a guide wire uh, not have been not possible without ECIRS and supine PCNL. So the question is uh, now from Bhargavardhan Reddy who is from uh, Nandyal and uh, he is asking that uh, do you do supine PCNL in all cases or any selective patients like obesity or anything? Okay, last uh, almost I think seven years since 2016 I am only doing supine PCNL. So I have not done a single prone PCNL or maybe I have also forgotten now how to do prone PCNL. Now. Yeah. So uh, supine PCNL can be done in all patients even I am doing last uh, 
three four years, but I am comfortable. But occasionally, uh, what to honestly, lot of people will ask. Uh, there will be some fear that colonic injury will be more in supine patient. Why this fear comes? First question. Sir, this fear comes first of all. Uh, uh, we we are not sure because the punctures are more lateral. in supine pcnl so first thing is we are always concerned there is concern of colonic injury even in prone pcnl i see many seniors demonstrating prone pcnl and they always show they see the colonic shadow is not moving with the needle indentation that means i am not in the colon but though i am not i would not agree that that's the absolute confirmation that somebody is not in the colon but with my experience this i can ensure one can either be in the colon or in the pcs it is impossible to do a colonic injury and enter the pcs especially laterally oblique position the colon actually falls away from the kidney colon being more suspended by its uh, mesentery it's more intraperitoneal as the patient turns lateral the colon falls away from the kidney as we see in the laparoscopy when we turn the patient the colon is actually dropping down from the kidney the second Chances question is uh, uh, maybe, no maybe needle is uh, if you go more anteriorly leaving posterior axillary line and then abdomen is in the front so lot of people may feel that front abdomen means intestine back of, of the abdomen means uh, muscle so as you said little lateral puncture feels that we may are going into the abdomen and injure the vessel and second question do you feel any difficulty in dilating the tract in supine patient what i will tell you my initial fix you 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 are much before you started than me so i wanted to ask you when we do alken dilatation or because the kidney moves because you are going against gravity see you are going dilatation like this yeah so first few dilatations are little tricky where recta sheath you are going against gravity uh, the uh, the kidney parenchyma because the kidney moves way forward and then if you put hand uh, it quickly gives way and then you go in so in prone pcl kidney is pressed down and compressed so you have to concentrate only on needle here you have to concentrate on uh, resistance as well as against gravity after some time i realized that this is not a major hurdle as long as you are a straight track that is fair okay so what is your opinion on this sir regarding dilatation uh, i find least mobility with single step dilatation generally yeah and other methods which i use to reduce the there is definitely more mobility of the kidney and i agree to that in supine position or oblique supine position but what happens Uh, one method i use because i use a elken uh, needle and cannula so elken needle cannula is 8 9 french and it's a quite rigid thing so one has to ensure that there is no buckling of guide wire when you are passing the elken needle or cannula okay the second step one can use through the elken cannula can keep a more rigid guide wire like zebra guide wire or strip guide wire the first few dilatations you will do with what Uh, before first dilatation can... only I do it with alken cannula. First after needle, the next goes with the alken needle and cannula. And if I want to, if I am going through mini perp, then I will put a zebra guide wire. First guide wire I pass a thermo guide wire. I put additional zebra guide wire and I uh, pass the sheath over the zebra guide wire because zebra or strip guide wire is. more rigid and it it doesn't allow it gives you sense of the direction and in even while you are pushing one has to continuously screen in the cm that they, the guide wire should not buckle if the we have to go calyx has to be here but if my if if my needle is above or my needle is below in both case the guide wire will buckle guide wire buckling will be seen it will be going like this so you have to correct the direction that buckling is not there and gently you dilate and with these methods i have not experienced uh, that it is much of a concern in terms of dilatation and single step dilatation is always better last option i would say they use a balloon 
but that additional cost is there and it it is a it comes with own uh, what about the what about the uh, after dilatation go inside uh, do you need excessive flushing from below in supine pcl or not like that because water won't retain it will be flushing out flushing out what do you feel sir uh, we yeah, I to use it because the uh, system is little more collapsed. There are two advantages. I I prefer to keep uh, uretic catheter in the superior calyx. And reason being, the, when we flush from the superior calyx in supine position or oblique supine position, the superior calyx is actually more down actually. It's inferior to the position of the inferior calyx. It yeah. becomes reverse. So because the superior calyx is more gra gravity wise down, so the stone, whatever you break, it is chance that fragments will invariably enter the superior calyx and you have taken a middle or inferior calyxial puncture and after breaking, half of the stone is in the superior calyx, the dust primarily. So by flushing the superior calyx, it creates a uh, pressure tunnel which the guides the stone towards the sheath. That is one thing. So that is the, uh, and by the flushing, the system also dilates. Other thing is like uh, many people use uh, uh, super perk sheath and super perk sheath has a tight snugly fitting valve around the nephroscope and the outlet channel is in control. So we, I don't use a suction in that. I simply block it to fill the system. Yeah. I flush from only below when I'm withdrawing the scope and I want stone fragments to come towards me, then only I flush from below. So by blocking the outlet cell, there's enough dilatation and I don't find any difficulty. Do you think that movement from one calyx to other calyx, I feel superior, inferior to superior is better in supine, uh, whereas middle to inferior is little difficult. Do you feel the same or no? So middle to inferior, uh, sir, uh, all depends once somebody has taken a puncture. It all depends uh, whether the, the angle between two calyx is acute or obtuse. If yeah, the yeah. angle is like this, uh, I am really not sure whether it will be convenient either it is prone or supine to, to, to go like this and then go like this. If the angle is like this, if there is a broad compound calyx and dilated system, then from middle also it is possible. Uh, Maybe in the prone PCNL, the uh, track length is shorter. Yeah. Track length being shorter, it, it, it gives little more uh, mobility to the scope because of the shorter track length. But we can achieve the same short track if we want, even in, even in the supine position also. Go, as I showed in the video, if we go a little more posterior for the middle position puncture, we can shorten the length of the uh, length of the track and uh, i think the mo enough mobility can be achieved the other advantage is mini mini pcnl mini scope is very narrow and it is very easy to move it from inferior to superior or middle to inferior compared to a normal uh, standard size microscope and third advantage is anyways if there is any moment difficulty we uh, I use uh, uh, flexible uretroinoscope very liberally before causing any infundibular tear or bleeding itself only I pass the scope and take, take out the stones from there and deliver them from the PCNL track. Okay. So with these I how we manage it. Sure. So with this we will conclude the session. Uh, it's around uh, one, one hour, uh, sorry 40 minutes. Uh, anyway, this is not completely detailed discussion on supine PCL. It is in difficult cases. So I don't want to go into the too much of these things. These two cases are unique. Astrogenesis imperfecta with such a difficult, uh, 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 I mean the way stature of the patient looks, it is difficult. And diverticular stones are always difficult. They are usually managed with uh, PCNL. And uh, RIRS will help definitely in passing guide wire, in searching the hole, in injecting the contrast, in going and seeing the outline and very small holes can be uh, injected with contrast and then puncture can be more scientific. These are all there. Definitely you have shown very nicely both the cases. Thank you very much Aditya. Thank you sir. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much.